Our gospel for today is from Matthew chapter 2. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we have observed his star at its rising and we have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out. And there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I um, was thinking about this story and also enjoying a, a time um, with less work. So instead of putting together a traditional sermon, I'm going to read a story. Um, it's an old story by Henry Van Dyke. Um, I will admit to not doing my research as Megan suggested about whether or not he was secretly a terrible white man. Um, uh, so I apologize for not doing that work and I confess that. Um, however, this story um, is, uh, I think a, a really special piece um, by him. It's called The Other Wise Man. In the days when Augustus Caesar was the ruler of many kings, including Herod, who reigned in Jerusalem, there lived among the mountains of Persia, a certain man named Artaban. Artaban was one of the Magi, men who studied the stars to learn the truth about God. He and his three friends, Caspar, Melchior, and Balthazar, had made a wonderful discovery. In ancient writings, they had found a promise that at a special time, a beautiful new star would rise in the sky, and at the rising of the star, a great king would be born. He would be the truth sent from the one God, the son of the most high. Artaban believed the time was near, so he sold his house and all his possessions to buy three jewels as gifts for the new king. He had bought a sapphire as blue as the Persian night sky, a ruby as red as the first rays of sunrise, and a pearl as pure and white as the snow-capped mountains at twilight. Each night he spent watching the sky until at last, could that be it? There in the distant horizon at first, it looked like a tiny spark, but it grew larger as it rose in the sky. First blue, then red, and then at last a bright gleaming white light. Artaban exclaimed, it's the sign that the king is coming and I will go to meet him. With haste, Artaban gathered some food and provisions for the journey. He had arranged to meet Caspar, Melchior, and Balthazar at the temple in Babylon by midnight, 10 days from when the star would rise. He could not be late. Artaban saddled Vasta, his fastest horse, and rode off into the night. For 10 days, he rode over grassy hills, through lush valleys, climbing mountains and rivers, barely pausing for food and rest. 
On the 10th day, with Vasta nearly exhausted, Artaban knew they were only a few hours from Babylon when something startled Vasta. Artaban dismounted to find the body of a man in the road. Artaban turned to leave when there was a groan and a tug at his robe. The man was alive. Artaban knew that without help, this man would not survive the night, but if he paused, he would surely miss his friends. Artaban looked up at the star he had been following. O God of truth and light, show me the way of wisdom which only you know. And with that, Artaban knew what he must do. Hour after hour, nurse the man back to health, giving him sips of water and medicine made of herbs he carried with him. When at last the man was strong enough, the man told him, we have nothing with which to repay you, but I will tell you this. From our prophets, we have learned that the Messiah will be born in Bethlehem, not in Jerusalem. And that is where you must seek him. And with the Hebrews' blessing, Artaban rode off, reaching Babylon at the first light of dawn. Artaban's friends were gone, but under a brick at the foot of the temple, he found a note. We have waited till past midnight and can delay no longer. We go to find the king. Follow us across the desert. Worn and exhausted, Artaban knew that Vasta could not cross the desert. Reluctantly, he sold the sapphire and with it bought a camel and provisions for the journey. Week after week, month after month, Artaban crossed the desert, always following the star, always hoping to catch up with his friends, always praying that he would find the king. Finally, he came to Bethlehem. Searching the town, he found a stone cottage with a young woman rocking her baby. Could this be the child he was looking for? No, but she fed him and talked with him. Yes, there had been strangers here and they brought odd gifts with them to Joseph and Mary and their son. But just as quickly as the strangers came, they left. And then Joseph with his family left in the night. No one knows why, but rumor has it they went to Egypt. Suddenly, there was an uproar in the streets. Screams and shouts, swords clashing, women crying out, the soldiers, Herod's soldiers, they're killing our children. Artaban wasted no time. He motioned for the woman and her baby to hide, and then he stood in the doorway. He reached into his pocket and pulled out the ruby. When the captain of the guard approached Artaban, he simply said, I am here alone and I have this gem for any soldier who will leave me in peace. Greedily, the man snatched up the ruby and took the soldiers to march on. Artaban looked again into the night sky. Oh God of truth, Forgive me for telling that which was not true to save the life of a child and for once again giving another gift that was meant only for you. Will I ever be worthy to see the face of the king? In the morning, Artaban rode off toward Egypt. He saw the pyramids and the Nile always searching. He found many to serve, but none to worship. For 33 years, he searched until at last his body was old and tired, and he thought to return one last time to Jerusalem in hopes of finding the king. When he arrived, the city was preparing for Passover, but there was something more to the crowded streets with pushing and shouting. When he asked what was going on, he was told, have you not heard? Two thieves are to be crucified, and with them, a man, Jesus of Nazareth. Some say he is the son of God. He is to be executed because he said that he was king of the Jews. Artaban's heart raced. Could this be? Could this be the king that he had searched for all these years? Then he felt the pearl in his pocket. Maybe, just maybe, he could offer the pearl to the enemies of the king and rescue him. 
Artaban turned to find him when soldiers crossed his path. They were dragging a young girl. She was dirty, her hair was tangled, her dress was torn. She called out to him, help me kind sir. My father died owing a large sum of money. I am being sold as a slave to pay his debt. Save me from a life worse than death. Artaban had missed his king twice already because of helping someone in trouble. But helping this girl would be a true act of love. And wasn't that what this God was all about? Artaban placed the pearl in the hand of the girl. This is your ransom, child. And all at once the sky turned black, thunder rolled through the streets. The soldiers ran off as the buildings began to sway back and forth. Suddenly a piece of tile from a roof fell and struck Artaban on the temple. He fell bleeding. As the girl sat holding him, she couldn't see who he was talking to, but she heard him speak out in his Persian language. When, Lord, when did I see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did I see you naked and clothe you, or sick and in prison and visit you? I have searched for you 33 years, and I have never seen your face. Then the girl heard the voice, gentle but strong. Whenever you served any of my children, you served me. And then with great peace, the other wise man found his king. The wise ones in the Bible were guided by a star in the hope of finding God's promised one. And they stayed true to that journey, even when they were confronted by Herod and the powers that sought to destroy that promise. And Artaman in this story is likewise guided by the belief in God's love and care, despite repercussions. There is a new-ish, I have no idea, I've only heard of it in the last few years, this semi-liturgical practice for this first Sunday in the secular calendar or for Epiphany. Um, it's a practice called Star Words, not Star Wars, Star Words. It's hard to say. When, um, and that is a practice where either you randomly choose a word, like if we were all together, I would have them like pre-printed. I see Autumn nodding. I think it must have started in Seattle. It seems like a very Seattle Pacific Northwest thing. Um, but if we were in person, we would have uh, stars pre-printed with words already on them and you would pick one. You could either randomly choose a word or through prayer and meditation come up with a word and that word is written on a star. And then the hope is is that you put that star somewhere where you see it regularly, like ours are going on our bathroom mirror, for example. And that word journeys with you as you um, go through the year acting as sort of a, a guide. Meditating or reflecting on that word throughout the year might give you clarity, or it might help you see things in a, a new way, in a new perspective, or it might just remind you of the gifts of God that ground you. And so what I'll do is I'll put a few links in the chat if you want to do this practice with me. It's not like we're in person. I can't force you to take a star, but I see the Brownleys have stars ready, right? Um, so um, one will be a coloring page where either you can color a star or if you're like me and lazy, there's a pre-colored one that you have. Darlene has a star too. I can only see a few of you. So if others are holding up your stars, um, sorry, I can only see about five. Um, so you can color a star um, or if you're more creative like Darlene, you can make your own. Um, and I'll also put in the chat a, a word generator. So either you can like go into a quiet time and really think about what word bubbles up for you in meditation, or you can just go to this word generator and um, either take whatever word it generates for you or just keep clicking it until it gives you a word that you like. That's what Tim did at first. <laughs> he said, I don't like that word, I don't like that word. Um, for example, um, Tim's word this year I have is balance, um, and my word is presence. 
if you need an example of like the kinds of words to get you started. So I'll do that once I stop recording, I'll put those links in the chat so you can access them. But I, I hope that this is a meaningful practice for you as we start this year to help us figure out um, where we are going and who we are following. Please pray with me. Oh God, T.S. Eliot once said, for last year's words belong to last year's language and next year's words await another voice. May the words you've put on our hearts be our guide for this new year. May they remind us of your love and walk with us in this journey of faith as we ever with the wise ones seek the promised hope of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen.